Welcome back to MVM. Today we have a Kickstarter preview. This one is from Alley Cat Games. It is called Chocolate Factory, which is a one to five player game about making chocolate. Yeah, you are going to be building engines in the way of adding parts to your factory, running these conveyor tiles literally through your factory and using those factory parts on various types of candies and chocolates to sort of upgrade them and then ship them off to the department store or the corner store. Like we should say with all of our Kickstarter previews, this is in fact a prototype. You're actually seeing some paper components yes. here that will be changed as the game develops. Make sure you guys go to the Kickstarter page to see the final components. However, let's talk to you about what we do have in front of us. As David said, each of us is going to have our own factory. This factory board is going to have four slots on the top and four slots on the bottom in order to put factory parts. You're going to have two that are pre-built in. You're going to have one that's going to be a chute and then five other ones that you can add on or build over other pre-existing ones. You're actually going to be using these tiles to move candies through your factory to be able to change those candies from one type into another. There's a whole bunch of different candies, but everything is going to start from the cocoa bean itself. Yeah, it's interesting. We have all these beautiful components and I do believe these are just like or if not close to what the final components will be like but you start with the beans then you move on to cocoa then these tablets which are pretty much like the candy bars then wrap those things and turn them into candy and finally get them in boxed candy you have to follow this route in order to upgrade these various things in different ways in the center of the board you have the the main board this is going to have your money that you've earned you're going to be selling your chocolates to both corner stores and to department stores each time you do that, you're going to mark your money that you've gained. It's also going to have the round marker. You're going to play through six different rounds or days. And each of those days, you're going to get an X number of coal in order to power those parts within your factory. Yeah, and across the top, you're going to have these employee cards. These are face down stacks of different employees that are associated with the department store that it's at the bottom of the board. These employees are going to be used to break and bend the rules as you navigate each round of the game. Also on the board, you have the factory parts. These come in two different types. You have level A's and level B's. They're going to get increasingly better as you go through the stack. You have all the corner stops, uh, corner shops. These come in small, medium, and large orders. When you look at these, they're going to tell you exactly what that particular corner shop is looking for and how much money they'll give you when you sell that particular type of chocolate to them. And as you said, the bottom is going to have all the department stores. Each of these department stores has a very particular set of chocolates that it wants uh, in their store. But the trick here is that you have to have the right employees to be able to send chocolates to them. Yeah, and finally, right in front of you with your player board, everyone's going to have three more conveyor tiles in addition to the four that start on their player board. So you're going to have seven and there are going to be some employees that might adjust that, but typically you're going to be running with seven conveyor tiles. All right. So to start the game, everyone's going to get an X number of coal. That coal is going to be determined by the round or the day that it is in. Right now we have on Monday, which is five coal. You're just going to collect that coal and place it off to the side. Each player is also going to start with one of each of the three different corner shops. Those come in small, medium, and larger. So these are going to be dealt out randomly to each of the players. Yeah, and it's interesting to note, the smalls just have one thing that you need to fulfill, the mediums two, and the larges have three. When you're fulfilling these, you're going to have to fill, fulfill them in order from bottom to top, and you can't do them all at once at the end of a turn. So you're going to be fulfilling by shipping candies to these corner shops throughout the game in some cases. So to start the game, here's how it works. We've already distributed the coal to each of the players. Then we're going to distribute stacks of factory employees and stacks of factory parts. In order to do this, you're going to distribute these in even piles. We have a three player game set up, which means we're going to have three stacks of both of those two different things. The stack of employees is going to go two, two, and one. So a stack of two, another stack of two, and a stack of one. These are going to be placed face down. We're going to actually draft these. Yeah, you're going to do the same thing with the factory parts, which you take right off the top of the factory part stack. The employees are going to be taken off one from each of those stacks so that you're always ensured that you have one employee associated with every one of the department stores. With the factory parts, you're going to do the same exact thing, a stack of two, a stack of two, and a stack of one, but these are going to go face up on the table. Now, this is where the beginning of the expand and recruit phase starts, which is when all the players are going to draft one of these stacks at a time. When you draft, you're going to start with the first player. They're simply going to pick one of these six possible stacks, and they're going to take those into their hand. They can do any one that they so wish. And you're going to snake around the table until we get to the last player. Then we're going to do a reverse draft, starting with that last player again and coming back around to the first player. So everyone should, by the end of it, have 
both factory workers and some kind of set of factory parts. When you have those in your hand, you're going to pick one from each of those stack. That's going to be your factory worker for that particular day, and that's going to be your new factory part that you're going to introduce into your factory. All these factory parts do something very, very different from one another. Yeah, the factory parts come in a wide range of functions. And in fact, you're going to look at a lot of these things and really try to determine what kind of engine you want to build up. But I'll just show you a couple of them. A lot of them are going to show you one type of chocolate, and then it's going to show upgrading to maybe one or two different types of chocolate or wrapped candy. At the very top of every one of these cards is going to be an amount of coal that needs to be used to run that. And we'll get to how that works in a moment. But these things convert candy. Some of them let you convert anything up one rung on that ladder of candies. And then there's others that let you double the amount of candy that's on your tile. Basically a variety of different things. So it becomes very important where you place these because those cards are going to affect only the conveyor tile either below it or above it. When you're looking at the factory workers, they come in three different types, but each one of them is going to specialize in one of those particular department stores. So you're going to have one that specializes in one all the way up to number five. When you're talking about the different types of factory workers though, there's three different basic types. You have ones that give you benefits, you have ones that give you a new action, and then you give one that give you a gift of some kind of resource to be able to use. You're going to pick one of those. And as I said, they tie in. Each of these is going to have a special ability on them, and they're also going to have a number here that tells you which one of these factories or department stores that they tie into. That's because at the end of the round, when you want to deliver some of your candies that you've made or produced at that, at that point, you can only deliver them to one of these five different areas, depending upon the factory worker that you chose. Right. After you've done the expand and recruit, everyone should have one new factory part and one new employee on their board. Then you're going to run your factories. Now, this is the interesting thing about this game. Once you've played it probably once, this, a lot of it can be done simultaneously, including this phase. To run your factory, you're simply going to take the first of your three uh, conveyor tiles and push that in along your factory board, pushing the last one out. So I'll start with that. If you push one out that has candy of any kind on it, that candy is going to go into your storeroom, and we'll get to that in a second. But that first tile that you added, that is always going to come with one free bean. That bean starts the process. Then you can start running your factory parts. Once you've pushed one conveyor tile on there, you can run as many factory parts as you want, but you can only run each once after a conveyor belt push. Once you've done that and used some of your coal, then you can take your second tile of three total and do the exact same thing. You're gonna be able to run all three of those tiles every round, but you're also limited to the amount of coal you have. So you have to have a good balance of coal and using that coal on certain factory parts and not others in order to get what you need for the stores. And it's very important to remember too, when you look at the factory board, you're gonna notice that each of them are in very particular areas. So these two factory parts only interact with this particular uh, tile that you see there. You're also going to notice this tile here. This is going to actually be a place where you can shoot things from your factory line into your storeroom as well. So that is an option as well. If you don't want to wait for those pieces to fall off your conveyor belt, you can always shoot them out prematurely. Yeah, so the shoot is one of those three first cards, or actually they're probably going to be printed on the player boards. It's going to be in your factory to begin with. That's going to add candy to your storeroom, as are the candies that come off the end of the conveyor belt. At the end of the round, you have to be careful because you can only keep two candies of any type in your sh storeroom at the very end. Now, of course, you'll be able to fulfill between the end of this and that portion of the game. That is basically what you do. Once you run your three conveyor tiles, you're going to move on to the fulfill stage. This is where each of the players simultaneously as well can fulfill both the corner shops that they have in front of them, as well as any of the department stores that are tied in very specifically to the employee that they chose. Each of these are gonna have prerequisites on them, what kind of candies you can deliver to them. Now remember, anytime you de deliver to any of these corner shops, you can only deliver to one level. So if in fact you can complete two levels, you're gonna have to wait until the next round in order to do so. When you fulfill to any of these department stores, again, these are looking for very specific types of chocolates, and you just deliver those back to the supply and then move your marker up. These are all um, area majority at the end of the game. So if you have the most in those areas, you're going to be able to collect some money at the end of the game. Yeah, and remember, it's very important to remember that you can only deliver to a de department store for which you had an employee associated with. So if I took an employee that has a one, I'm going to deliver to the Palace Boutique. That's the only place I can deliver to. 
On the flip side, you can actually deliver to the department stores as much as you want in any given round. So, for instance, if I have this type of tablet at the end of the round and I have five of them, I could deliver all five of those to that department store if I had the right employee and move up five spaces on that track. Anytime you deliver to any of your own personal corner shops, you're going to collect that money when the card is complete. You're going to discard that card. Then you're going to draw one from each of this, these small, medium, and large stacks and pick one of those. So you can just pile up a, a bunch of large corner shops if you wish, or you can go smaller if you so choose. At the end of the round, you're going to have a cleanup phase. This is when you're going to remove everything from your storeroom that is more than two chocolates at that given time. You're also going to put your factory employee into the discard pile. Those won't carry over to you, with you until the next round. You're going to move the marker and you're going to do that for five more rounds. At the end of the game, there's a wide variety of victory points. Not only are you getting the money that you've collected through the course of the game, but also you're going to get monies depending upon where you end up on each of these different department stores. Each of them have a built-in number of money that you get to collect if you have the highest uh, denotion on that particular card. Plus, you get even more money if you've been on all five of them compared to just being on one or two of them. Yeah, you wanted to diversify if you can to get a little bit of bonus money. Now, the corner stores is also has some end of game scoring. Whoever is delivered to the most corner stores throughout the entire game, that one person is going to get 12 pounds or 12 dollars, which is a fair amount of points as well. So this game is really about engine building, being able to build up factory locations in your particular factory, adding those right parts, timing those so that they hit very specific part lines at the right times, so you can convert them to one type into another, and also drafting the right type of employees to be able to manipulate those type of things. Yeah, you're really going to want to specialize your factory with very specific parts, depending on what department stores are out there, what they want, what your corner shops need, because you can really go heavy and get a lot of those things done. But then if things change and you get a corner store that needs something completely different, you have to remember that you can always overbuild some of the parts in your factory to sort of change your engine up. So that is Chocolate Factory. It's from Alley Cat Games. It is a one to five player game, so it also has solo rules. Make sure you guys check out the Kickstarter for all of that. Follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, and now follow us also on Instagram, and we will catch you guys next time. Bye-bye.